Today I want to take a look at one of the systems in Unity that is often overlooked, and that is the Playables API. The Playables API lets you connect playables together into a tree-like structure called the Playable Graph, and we can mix and blend them together dynamically at runtime. Playables can be animations, animator controllers, audio, and also scripts, and these can be provided by objects in your game. In today's example, all the objects here in this scene are providing their own animations for the player to use during interactions. They get added to the playable graph dynamically, and we can control the blending frame by frame. So let's get started building our own animation system that uses the Playables API. The first thing I'm going to do is add a few using statements here because we're going to need a few libraries. So let's import Unity Engine.animations, Unity Engine.playables, and we're going to import the more effective coroutines library, which is a free asset from the asset store. This asset lets you run coroutines from any class, even ones that don't inherit from mono behavior. And in most cases, it doesn't make any memory allocations. First, let's create a variable for our playable graph. This graph will contain the set of all of our other nodes. Next, let's declare two animation mixer playables. Now, these two mixers will be responsible for blending between nodes. The first one will be a top level mixer between our regular animations and our special one shots. And then I also want a sub mixer that'll blend all of my locomotion together. So going from idle to a walk. Now, it's worth mentioning that if you have a system like a locomotion system that you already built into an animation controller, you can actually use an animator controller playable to control that as a node in your playable graph. So in today's example, where I'm using a mixer playable to run my locomotion, you could easily replace that with an animator controller playable. Okay, moving on. Let's also add a member level animation clip playable for the one-shot animations. We can replace this one-shot playable at runtime whenever we're going to play a new one-shot animation. And finally, I'm going to define two coroutine handles, one for blending into the one-shot and one for blending out of the one-shot. These coroutines will run to smoothly blend the weights as we're changing between different nodes in our playable graph. I'm just going to collapse up these using statements. Let's quickly draw out a little graph of what we're trying to accomplish here. So the playable graph needs a playable output at the top level. Just below that, we're going to feed everything through a top level mixer. This will set the weights of everything below it. And feeding into that will be a locomotion mixer and one shot playable animations. Coming into the locomotion mixer, I'm just going to mix two animations, idle and walk. So let's jump back into code and get these things all set up. We'll come back and look at this diagram one more time after we're done that. OK, let's move on to the constructor. All we really need to get this up and running is to pass in a reference to our animator. And we're also going to need two animation clips so that we can have some locomotion. So let's start adding some values into these member variables. The playable graph can be defined with the create method, and you can just give it a name, whatever you want. Every graph needs at least one playable output. And so let's define that using its static create method that takes in the playable graph, a name and a reference to the animator that we've passed in. Now, our other playable nodes inside of our graph need to connect up to this output. So let's next define our top level mixer. When creating a mixer, you got to pass in the playable graph and you also have to define how many inputs are going to come into this mixer. Now, the number of inputs isn't set in stone. You can change it at runtime if you need to. But in this video, we're only going to have two. We're going to mix between the locomotion mixer and our one shot animations. So with that defined, we can connect it up to our playable output using the set source playable method. The next thing we should do is define our locomotion mixer. Now, it again is going to have two input nodes because it's going to take in the idle and the walk. Now we can connect up the locomotion mixer directly to the top level mixer onto its first input. So this method connect input connects up the top level mixers input zero to the locomotion mixers output zero. Now I'm going to add one more line that'll make sure that the locomotion mixer starts with the maximum amount of influence on the top level mixer. So we do that by setting the first input of the top level mixer, which is index zero to a full one F. OK, next we got to define two animation clip playables for each of our regular animation clips in our locomotion. So we got an idle playable and a walk playable. Now I'm just going to make sure that both of these animation clips inside of the playables are set to loop. And just like we did with the top level mixer, I'm going to connect these two playables up to our locomotion mixer. So I'll put the idle playable on input zero and the walk playable on input one. And then all we have to do is tell the playable graph to play and we can use it. So at this point here, we've connected our entire graph except for the one shot playable. 
Let's make sure that locomotion is working first before we introduce that. Okay, we're all done with setting up our graph in the constructor. So let's just collapse this up so it's out of the way and let's keep moving. In order to properly blend our locomotion states, I want to have a public method here where I can accept the velocity and the max speed. That way I can use an inverse lerp to figure out the actual weight. I can set the idle on index zero to be one minus that weight and the other channel, our walk, will be the actual weight. One last thing is that Unity requires us to manually destroy the playable graph when we're done, otherwise it'll create a nasty memory leak. So just check if it's valid. If so, destroy it. Now let's jump over to my player class and make sure we can use this animation system. First, let's declare a variable to hold it. I'll put that right underneath my declaration for my animator. Then in our start method, after I've gotten a reference to the animator, we can then call the constructor of the animation system. Then if we come down into our update method, let's use that public method on the animation system to provide it with our navmesh agent's velocity and our navmesh agent's max speed. And finally, let's make sure that that destroy method gets called on the animation system when we destroy the player. So let's go recompile and press play. So at this point, we're not going to see anything any different than you would make just with a very simple blend tree, right? But it's working and it looks pretty good, actually. So let's move on to add in our one-shot animations from these different interactable objects. Let's just collapse up these two methods we just wrote and we'll start writing a new one, play one shot. The first thing I want to do is have a guard clause here so that if we're already playing this particular animation clip, let's just bail out early. We don't need to be playing it twice. However, if that's not the case, we should make sure that if we're already playing a one-shot clip, we should interrupt it so that we can play this one. Let's write this interrupt one shot method before we go any further. The first thing to do is make sure that there are no blending coroutines running. So let's kill the coroutines for the blend in handle and the blend out handle. Next, let's make sure that the input weights on our top level mixer are reset to the default, which was one on the locomotion and zero on the other. Then finally, we're gonna disconnect the one shot playable from our graph and we can do that in another method. So let's come down below this method and we'll define our disconnect one shot. Now to disconnect something from the graph is actually pretty straightforward. We're just gonna say disconnect the input at input one and then we can destroy that playable. Easy enough. Let's come back up to our play one shot method and keep going after we've interrupted. The next thing we wanna do is create a new animation clip playable out of our animation clip that we've passed into this method. Now we can connect this up to our top level mixer and we could either immediately set its input weight to a full one or we could introduce some nice blending anytime we play a one shot. But how long should any of those blends be? Well, that's up to you, I guess. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to set it first to be 10% of the clip length, but I'd never want it to be less than 0.1 F or more than half of what the clip length is. I don't expect to have any super short animation clips, so this should work pretty well. To make this as straightforward as possible, I'm now going to introduce two more methods. One will be for blending in, and one will be for blending out after some delay. We can default that delay to be the length of the animation clip minus the blend duration. So let's scroll down a little bit and make some room and get started on these blending methods. Let's define a blend method that's going to be our coroutine method. It's going to take in a duration, a blend callback, that's going to be the method that actually calculates the weights. Let's have a delay, which will be optional. And let's have a callback to execute when the blending is actually finished. And that could be optional as well. So if we have passed in a delay, let's make sure that we yield return that many seconds. If you are using the more effective coroutines library, make sure to use their methods for this. And also make sure that your coroutine is returning an IE numerator of type float. Next, let's set a local variable up here to track our total blend time. We're going to normalize this. So while the blend time is less than one, we're going to be doing our blending. So let's just continue to add to the blend time based on time dot delta time divided by the total duration. Then every frame, we're going to run that blend callback passing in the blend time. And then we just yield return that float value. When we're all finished our blending, let's make sure that we actually set it to the max, just in case it was, you know, almost the max. We might as well just set it straight to 1F. And then all we have to do is run our finished callback if it exists. So now that we've got this little helper coroutine, let's round out our blend in and blend out methods. 
they're going to be almost identical. So blend in just takes in the duration, how long we want to blend for. We're going to assign this coroutine we're about to run into a blend handle so that we can kill it anytime we want. We're going to use the MEC method timing dot run coroutine. And in here, we're going to pass in this blend method that we've written. We're blending in. We're going to leave the default parameters because we don't need a delay or anything to happen on the finish. However, we have to pass in the duration and a little callback to run during the blend. So we'll pass in blend time as the argument to our little callback here. So first of all, let's calculate a weight by doing a lerp between one and zero on the blend time. We'll set our locomotion mixer's weight to be that weight, and we'll set the weight of our one-shot animation to be one minus the weight. So this little function will reduce the weight of our locomotion and increase the weight of our one-shot animation. To blend out is going to be almost the inverse of this. So I'm just going to select all of this and copy it, and we'll just make some very small changes to it. We can start by renaming this method to be blend out, and blend out needs two parameters. It also needs the delay, because we don't want to blend out until a certain point after playing the animation, unless we are actually interrupting it. Now, instead of lerping from one to zero, let's lerp from zero to one. And finally, let's fill in the optional parameters because we do want to pass in a delay. And we also want to pass in a final callback, which is to disconnect the one shot from our playable graph. Now, how are we going to supply all of these animations from our interactable objects? Let's take a look at that class really quickly. So I've set up a very naive implementation of a visitor here. So during the update method, if the player is within range of the collider and they're pressing the space bar, the player will accept this interactable. And if we jump over to look at the player class, you can see that the accept method will take in that interactable. It will grab the animation clip from the object and then pass that into the play one shot method. And I also run a little coroutine just to make sure that the player is actually facing the object that they're interacting with. So I've recompiled everything and I'm gonna hit play. Let's first come over to the garbage bin. Yeah, we can pull something out of the trash. This object laying down on the floor. Yep, yeah, we can bend over and pick that up. And how about this shelf? The animation here is to grab something off the lower level of the shelf. And there you go. So the interactable objects are all supplying their animations correctly. This is looking really good. So far, we've only just scratched the surface of what you can actually do with the Playables API. You can start to add layers into your animations if you use the animation layer mixer playable. And not only does this mixer allow you to do layers, but you can also add masks to it. And then on top of all that, you can also have other kinds of playables. You can have audio playables, and you can also make your own custom script playables. Now, the different types of playables require different types of outputs, but all of those outputs can exist in the same playable graph. So you can set up some very powerful animation systems with this. In fact, some games with very complex animation systems don't use animator controllers at all. They only use the Playables API. I should point out too that Unity has some very simple but very useful examples on their website, and I'll put a link to that in the description. I'm just gonna point out one gotcha before I let you all go, and that is if you're gonna be playing your regular animator controller inside of the playable graph, you can just disable the one that's running on the animator because you don't need to be running both of them at the same time. Okay, well, that's all I've got for you today. Feel free to add some questions or comments below. I'll answer them as best as I can. And if there's enough interest in this, maybe we can take it a little bit further and make something a little bit more elaborate in the future. Thanks for watching. Hit that like button, and I'll see you in the next one.